So I had a friend at work who gifted me a couple old laptops. Now, this is one of them. This is a Dell XPS. Uh, it's from the Vista era. It's licensed for Vista. It has a Core 2 Duo in it. Uh, and had no hard drive. And uh, I thought, what am I going to do with this thing? I mean, it works. Uh, it comes up. Even the battery still works. It's too new to be considered classic. And it's too old to be really usable in a modern environment. Environment. So I thought to myself, <clears throat> what can be done with this thing? So I started snooping around. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, it would be neat if I could use this as, a, as some sort of DOS machine. So I could play old DOS games. That would be kind of fun. I thought I'd rig it up DOS box or something. And I remember hearing about a project a couple years ago called Free DOS. And I've heard a few people chime in about it here recently, with good reason, which I'll get to. And I thought, well, maybe I can use free DOS on this. I mean, the thing's got uh, 4 gig of memory. I put a hundred, I think, a hundred and sixty gig hard drive in it. Uh, it's, uh, it would be an ultra powerful uh, DOS machine, unimaginably powerful from back in the in the day. And so I thought, well, <clears throat> this may be a perfect opportunity to make this into something I could get some use out of, plus learn a, a thing or two. And so I uh, tread trepidatiously in the realm of free DOS. Uh, free DOS is freely obtainable from freedos.org. Uh, there are multiple flavors that you can download. I chose the uh, USB installation, although they also have a, a CD version, floppy disk version. They've even got versions specifically designed for older computers. Since this is a new machine, I thought I'd grab this one. <clears throat> the uh, big breakthrough here recently was the creation of SBEMU, that's Sound Blaster Emulation for you and me. And what this does is gives certain chipsets the ability to emulate a Sound Blaster in a DOS environment. This is a big deal because free DOS in the past that would play in silence effectively because they're without a Sound Blaster being there. And so I installed uh, the uh, files I needed on, an S on a uh, USB uh, stick, stuck it in, and uh, booted from the stick as the uh, website uh, suggests. Um, the uh, website gives you uh, exact information on how to install this. It's really a, a, a pretty straightforward process as long as you can boot off of the media that you've chosen. Uh, all you've got to do is just stick in the uh, bootable drive and follow the instructions that are listed. Uh, FreeDOS, the uh, people that make it even have a video that you can follow. i am sped through this uh, for brevity. But it's, it's not a difficult task to install this. So what is FreeDOS? It effectively lets you install a, a very, very accurate version of DOS uh, on a computer that normally you could not install, uh, install MS-DOS on. Uh, normally, on a 64-bit modern PC, you're not going to be installing DOS. Uh, when you've installed it, you come up, you're uh, confronted with this little menu here that lets you choose from a variety of different memory configurations you'll recall in the old days that dos you had to ha have a bunch of different flavors to get stuff to run and you'll notice that hasn't changed a bit uh once you've installed the sbemu uh which is simply just i just copied the files into my bin and uh and, and made an edit to the auto exec which and this is called fd auto uh, and i was good to go you'll note there in the set blaster settings that's where you're going to set up how you want your blaster to be configured. I went with the very basic, uh, the ones I used to have when I was uh, doing this back in the day. Your mileage may vary and what you want to set it up as. But otherwise, FD Auto is just an autoexec.bat. I added this set of files here as described by the installation uh, to make sure that SBEMU loaded. And that's pretty much all I did. Uh, it, and after that, it, would, it, would, uh, it was good to go. Uh, of course, if fdauto.bat is your auto exec bat, then you've got to have a config.sys, and that's fdconfig.sys. And when it loads up again, this is where your uh, at your config.sys uh, is located. Uh, the, again, this is all straightforward. I just went with the defaults <clears throat> being the first time I've used this. If you're a true old school uh, 
you know, bad head and system file guy, you could really go in there and make some changes. And so, once you're done, you, uh, <clears throat> FreeDOS installs several things, including an app section. The app I used the most was called uh, DN2. This is sort of like the DOS equivalent of, like, Directory Opus, if you're familiar with that on the Amiga. Just to, to uh, transfer files back and forth from the USB stick. I loaded up a bunch of games on the USB and copied them to the hard drive. Uh, and uh, if you ever need... So when I need to, to access the USB drive in DOS, I just boot up with the little USB stick I made and then don't do the installation and it allows you to uh, uh, copy stuff to the SD card and just to copy it over to the... Uh, or excuse me, the USB and copy it over to the hard drive. It's pretty simple. Uh, most of the other apps, but I just haven't fooled with. I haven't seen, had any reason to mess with them. Um, <clears throat> you also are going to get uh, a selection of games that they send over with it, which I don't think are very good. And, you, of course, I've got the free DOS directory, and in there is your bin directory. This is where all the money programs are. This is right where DOS lives. This is where you'll copy over your uh, SBEMU files, uh, and uh, you're good to go. So, once that's all taken care of, uh, you can start playing games. So I, I copied over just a sort of a hodgepodge of games that I thought I would try out. Uh, I don't have sound running on this right now, so but I, I will let you know when these games did or did not run with sound. Uh, so uh, the first thing you've got to try uh, is Doom. Uh, I happen to have a copy of Doom on the uh, computer that I could transfer over. And bam, uh, it worked perfectly with no uh, on the default memory setting uh, and the default audio with, with no problem. Uh, 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 it worked perfectly. It runs great. Uh, it was a whiz. It, it, uh, with no problem. Runs at full screen size at, at the highest uh, available option uh, and controlled great. Uh, I will tell you that on the uh, the, the uh, Dell XPS, uh, my keyboard fully works, as does my touchpad. Uh, so I do have <clears throat> I do have the uh, ability to use that as a mouse, which is nice. I've also noticed that uh, you can always install an external USB keyboard, and I'd wager a USB mouse will work as well. I haven't had the reason to try that since I've got the touchpad. But you can see as I go through this, I mean, uh, it's running great. Uh, I noticed that a lot of these programs, you are going to want to run the setup. So you can, or the install, or the run me, or any, or the set sound, any any of the various DOS uh, programs that will let you set up your sound blaster. I would not auto detect the sound blaster. I would set it manually, depending on uh, what your uh, what you've got your blaster settings uh, uh, set up as in your FD Auto dot bat. Uh, they come at a default. I believe I changed the. Def IRQ from seven, 5 to 7 in my default, since that was the more standard, traditional settings from back in the day, but I, you could probably go either way. So, obviously, Doom runs fine. I mean, <clears throat> so the other one we've got to try is Duke Nukem 3D. Um, the Duke Nukem I got was part of a CD pack, uh, and it was like the uh, upper tier level. It's the one I had. Uh, so, you can see First, what we're going to do here is just set up the sound. This is exactly what I was talking about. So you're going to want to set the sound up. Uh, this thing emulates a Sound Blaster Pro. It also will sometimes come up as a Sound Blaster or a Sound Blaster AWE. I've, I've used all of those settings to get to work at various points. Here we are setting up the uh, uh, all the things that you have. Just set them up exactly like you've got them set up in your Set Blaster, uh, in your FD Auto, and then... Once you've got this taken care of, <clears throat> and by the way, if you get this wrong, it will cause things to crash or not work. I mean, and often the program will say you've got this wrong, but sometimes it just it will freeze up. Uh, and so the, the two things I've noticed that will most of the time cause a program not to work, and by the way, you can ignore that. It was just looking for the CD that I didn't have. But most of the time, things when things don't work, it's either the way you've got the memory set up or the sound. Uh, some programs just straight up don't like SBEMU, and they won't work. And, and often, programs don't like the mere memory configuration. So, here is Duke. I can tell you Duke where it runs with full sound uh, and plays totally fine. Uh, it, uh, it works 
I've played uh, into it quite a bit without any trouble. It runs at a great clip, uh, again, on the highest uh, visual settings. Uh, and, of course, again, this is a computer. A Core 2 Duo would be, uh, like, <laughs> this was a game that was you could run on a 46 or Pentium. So this is leagues and light years ahead of those ga- uh, uh, configurations. This is one of the great advantages of, of uh, using free DOS. It's just that you can have a you can go get a laptop for five bucks somewhere, and have the ultimate DOS machine. And one of the benefits is, I mean, free DOS is as close to DOS as you're going to get without installing DOS. Up to the point where you can like, for example, free DOS detected the DVD ROM on this laptop. I could literally install CDs of games if I had them. Same with floppy disks. You can install stuff right off floppy. So this isn't like DOS box. I mean, you're actually in DOS. You could install, you could take your old games out of the box and install them. So now we're going to try uh, Archon Ultra. Now, I've, I've got this set up. I'm hitting run, and you'll watch what happens here. It just doesn't work. It just freezes up. So what we're going to do here, and I ran this as an example. <clears throat> you're going to have to monkey with these settings to get it to work. This game does not like uh, SBEMU or any of the memory configuration. So I just went to the last possible state, which is basically just it loads up nothing. And you'll see as we run it, uh, when it locked up before, now, bam, it works perfectly. We, of course, it has no sound. Uh, but otherwise, it's playable. This is a compromise that you're going to have to make with yourself. Um, as of the video I'm making here, uh, we're at FreeDOS 1.3. Uh, and I'm sure they are working on uh, uh, the newest version. Maybe they'll streamline some things, but uh, some things are going to work. Some things are going to work with sound. Some things are going to work without sound, and some stuff just isn't going to work. Uh, one thing you've got to consider is as, as excellent as free DOS is, it is not a full DOS, and so th- that is the way it goes. Here we are running Quake. Again, <coughs> excuse me, Quake runs with full sound and uh, looks great. It's another one, and this one uh, you can uh, uh, you can. I've even had, I've upgraded the uh, or I've updated the uh, resolution. I believe it ran at the eight, eight by six. Quake gives you a few more settings than the other ones, uh, and uh, it ran fine. <clears throat> it, it's another one. It ran quite nicely. Again, as you would expect, any of these things. I believe Quake, when it came out, could run on like a Pentium two or something. But again, you're in this laptop being a uh, Core two Duo is light years ahead of the P two. And so these games are going to run without issue. Uh, Now, of course, you're not going to have the, like, for example, the 3DFX uh, uh, settings or whatnot, unless you've got something that has that stuff. I don't. But, I mean, otherwise, it it runs quite nicely. Uh, You can uh, customize the controls, video options. Here I am turning up the gamma a little. Uh, I should mention that the video you're watching is literally fed directly out of the the HDMI port in the laptop. Uh, so here I am trying to run X-Wing. You'll notice I got that message about EMS memory complained. Uh, it didn't like that. So, okay, I'm like, okay, let's try another setting here. So we're going to, again, here we are at the memory settings. And we're going to try uh, something different. Uh, if you look at these settings, uh, you've got everything uh, from, like, the full memory allotment all the way down to loading free DOS without any drivers at all. So it gives you a, a decent selection of of uh, various uh, memory configurations to try. And of course, you're free to make your own, uh, which I did not do. It's just been so long. I, just could, I haven't fooled with it for a while. Once I get back to the swing of it, I may have a better luck with it. Now, you'll see, you notice I didn't get a message this time when I loaded it up. So we're going to set up the sound on uh, X-Wing, and then we're going to give this a whirl. Uh, we're now, you know, we're setting up the, sa- the, the basically the the sound and the and the gra- or the sound and the digital effects, and now we're going to try running this again. And wham, bam, Bob's your uncle. It's X-wing. This also works with full sound, and <clears throat> this is a a, a stone cold classic. Uh, if you're an old DOS head, this is the game that got me off the Amiga. If I'm honest. And when I didn't, when they didn't release this for the Amiga, I was like, "All right, that's the end of that," uh, because I wanted it bad. And uh, as soon as I got a PC that could run it, I had this. I had Tie Fighter. I skipped ahead a little bit here just so you can see a little bit of how it runs. 
But, uh, um, again, this runs uh, as well as it could, in, in all honesty. And uh, I didn't have any trouble at all uh, running through this thing. Uh, boy, man, I spent a lot of times. I really, I played TIE Fighter more than X-Wing, but I spent a lot of time playing them both. I tried TIE Fighter, by the way, and it also works fine. Uh, again, your mileage is going to vary on this, because I've tried plenty of games that worked, and I've tried something just straight up I couldn't get to work, and a lot that I couldn't get to work with sound. So it's a lot of it's going to be your tweaking. And, and there may be games I could not get to run with sound that you can if you are more... Uh, um, savvy in the ways of the config, auto config. So at this point, I'm like, man, this is great. I'm going to run One Must Fall. So I'm running this game. I'm got to love it. I got this working perfectly with sound. But the problem is, this is a game I want to use a control pad on. I didn't have a control pad that would work. All my USB pads, none of them worked. Despite the fact that in the, uh, <clears throat> when you look in the uh, bin area of free DOS, uh, there are files that are allegedly there to help you get your game controller to work. Now, um, I looked into this a little bit, and it specifically says that to get the US USB controllers to work in games that don't support USB controllers, I, 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 games looking for a gamepad, you're going to have to run this in a different mode uh, than it defaults to, and I can't... It, it says in the documentation... That, it, that the mode that you need to run to won't work in FreeDOS. Now, again, your mileage may vary on this, but I tried and tried and tried, and I can't get it to work with a gamepad. So I'm like, man, what are my options here? Because I really want to have something to play games on on my FreeDOS machine. So now we're going to come into the idiot version of, of what to do. So I tried multiple control pads on this, including this big joystick that the boat gate bought me or made me made out of a cigar box uh, with a little like uh, a little mini keyboard inverter a little inverter in it. I thought you know back when I was uh, making MAME cabinets early early on we used to cut up uh, keyboards and and interface those into the into the computer to, to simulate to you know hook up to arcade controls and I, th I thought, you know, I wonder if there's anybody out there that's making a modern equivalent of that, uh, aside from your people over at IPAC and Ultimark. And so I nosed around on uh, Amazon because I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I wanted something that could simulate a keyboard uh, with external controls. And what I came up with was this, the Development Keyboard Encoder uh, Game Controller. This will simulate 104... <clears throat> keys on the keyboard through a USB port. Remember I said that I noticed that the USB ports on the computer would always accept a, a, a PC keyboard, USB keyboard, it, no matter what you boot it into. No matter what memory configuration, the USB keyboard always worked. And I thought, well, if I can get something that th the computer thinks is a keyboard but isn't, I might be in business here. And so I picked this thing up uh, you know, I'm sure it's from the depths of China. Uh, it was a, uh, uh, I think it was like 37 bucks, I believe. Not, you know, not counting tax. And you get a lot of interface button wiring. I think you get 10, 10 sets of wires. They're not going to give you 100. And you get a long interface board. And you can see that the interface board has a ton of, of inputs on it. And then you get this little board that... Uh, um, attaches to the interface board with the ribbon cable and it's got an a to b uh usb port on it you can see it right there the square usb so all you do is literally hook that ribbon cable uh into that port and then when you look so that looks sort of like a keyboard and when you turn this thing over it's kind of hard to see here but the, yes it's labeled all the solder points in the back are labeled with what key they represent and so I was like, okay, if I can, if if the if the laptop will identify the this keyboard uh, um, gimmick as a keyboard, then I've got a chance to actually get this to work. And so uh, once I got this thing hooked up uh, to the uh, daughter board here, it was time to try this for real. Uh, and again, you the interface wiring you get, you get about ten wires that go to that special connector. And then on the other side, they basically have, like, what you would hook up to an arcade button. 
Uh, so you can see right there. And so what I've done here is I've I've got a wire. I'm going to put it in the letter K, just a random letter I picked out. And I'm, I'm going to hook the USB up. And so if I hit these two, if I touch these together, I should get the letter K multiple times because you're making that you're making that button press by touching these. And I was my fingers were crossed, and bam, it worked. It worked as it should in free DOS. So now we're cooking. That means we're in business. So, I took the cigar box joystick that the boat had made me, and I popped it open. I got lucky on this, too, because I guess there's some kind of weird standard on these on these uh, connectors. Now, the difference between what I bought and what I had here is the connector in this now, you'd think to yourself, hey, maybe this should work. Well, this simulates in Windows a gamepad, not a keyboard. And so, it was my job to basically... Uh, unplug uh, what boat had installed there, and then plug in mine. I looked around to try to figure out what the best configuration is in DOS for a, a for games that you would play with the keyboard, because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be telling the computer we're playing with a keyboard, but we're not. Um, so there are a few caveats. To this cute little project. <clears throat> Any game where you can reconfigure the keyboard to be what you want, you're golden. Okay, but I have noticed that a lot of DOS games have the keyboard uh, has they have the keyboard controls hardwired into the com into the computer. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well, you've got two choices: use the keyboard or open this up and rewire it. <laughs> That's it. Those are your choices. So here I am. I'm trying this. I'm I'm going to. I've got it set up <clears throat> and. Um, this, by the way, this is my favorite game in DOS. One Must Fall 297. So I'm picking my guy and uh, giving this a shot for the first time. Now, I had heard mixed uh, mixed things about this this encoder, uh, but I'll tell you that I've had very good success. I, I, I've got to get used to using this sort of joystick to play this game, but it worked very well. Uh, and it was a big win. And again, you've got a ton of different keys you can use on this. Uh, so it gives you a lot of interesting options, uh, not just what I did. So anyway, that's about all i got to say about it. If you're interested in picking all this stuff up, you can head over to FreeDOS.org and grab this. I, I think it's a good project to try out. Make sure when you get uh, to FreeDOS, you also make sure you download the SBEMU. And I'd be interested to hear how you did. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. Adios.